I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. We are all about townhouse living today from the contemporary to the classic all across the city. We are inside a unique Art Deco influenced property in West Soho. And check out how this designer embraced the original details in her Prospect Heights brownstone. Architect Hormuz Botlaboy shows off his family abode in Bed-Stuy. Plus, we explore a sleek, modern aesthetic in this Greenwich Village townhome. But first, a look inside this fully renovated project in the West Village by designer Brooke Gomez. This is one of my favorite projects. My goal here was really to make it feel comfortable and elegant. Welcome to Open House NYC. This week we're shining a spotlight on townhouse living, so it's only fitting that today I'm coming to you from this spectacular townhome on the Upper East Side. Built in 1881, this five-story, 22-foot wide home is filled with timeless elegance that never feels fussy. Notice the architectural details in the limestone facade, setting the stage for the classic style that runs throughout the home. So how much do you think this nearly 11,000 square foot townhouse is going for? Well, we'll let you know the price at the end of the show, but I'd love to hear your guesses. Definitely reach out on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram with your estimates. Well, you can't do a show that focuses on townhouses without a stop in Greenwich Village. So we begin on idyllic Grove Street at this beautifully appointed home designed by Brooke Gomez. This was a gut renovation, and every decision was made to both respect the character and history of the building, while also bringing a timeless elegance and continental flair to the interiors. Brooke explains the inspirations and shows us the result. I'm Brooke of Brooke Gomez Design, and welcome to the West Village. Finding a townhouse in New York City that's wider than 20 feet is almost impossible. So this house, at 21 feet wide by 100 feet deep, affords you a proper house and garden. And that's exactly what my client was looking for. This building is a late Greek Revival townhouse built in the mid to late 19th century. It was important to respect the bones and character of the house while modernizing it. My clients like the openness of this entry because typical townhouses can be dark. So it was really important from the beginning to flood this house with light. The library was intended for everything from watching a Knicks game to a cozy fire. We were told to use the Morgan Library as inspiration for the catwalk, so we constructed it out of bronze railings and a cast glass floor. When I'm shopping with clients, I always tell them, don't forget to look up. So what a treat to find the perfect fixture for our double height living room. When shopping for the furnishings in this living room, scale was the most important thing. But if I had to say what was my favorite thing in the room, it's this rug. It really grounds the room, it's unusual, and it has pink in it. And I curated all the pieces from the club chairs to the end table to the lamps. And they work well individually and as an ensemble. And keeping with the theme of traditional and modern, all our moldings, trim, and doors are period appropriate, while the fireplace is a modern touch. But my goal here in this room was really to make it feel comfortable and elegant. And in the kitchen, which is right off of the living room, it was all about storage. Our clients actually wanted a very chef-friendly kitchen, so that means custom millwork with easy accessibility and an oversized marble island never hurts. In the dining room, which is small in stature, it was important that every piece looked good and was essential. I found a set of Sornay chairs, a pair of Sornay sideboards, and this dining table that serves for an intimate dinner party or an epic Monopoly game. And the doors give you full access to the garden. In the garden, it was important to my clients that it have a French provincial feel, with attention paid to the greenery, flowers, and furnishings. I wanted to make sure that this garden was perfect for intimate outdoor entertaining. In the master bedroom, which we wanted to feel ethereal and quiet, I lifted the colors from the rug, which became the palette for the rest of the room. In a bedroom, I always feel it's so luxurious to have silk curtains. 
And again, in here, we wanted signature lighting pieces, which adds a little bit of playfulness to the room and the ethereal spirit. Doing a gut renovation is always a challenge, especially in a townhouse. But with the furnishings, lighting, and window treatments I selected, this is one of my favorite projects. That home was surprising and inspiring and felt like a place that could only exist in New York. Coming up after the break, we are sticking around the village for a look at this sleek renovation of a 1930s townhouse. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Greenwich Village for a look at this sleek and spacious townhouse just steps from Washington Square Park. Though built in the early 1930s, it's been updated from top to bottom into a stylish and thoroughly contemporary home, both inside and out. Take a look. Hello, I'm Matthew Coleman of Coleman Real Estate Group. Today I'm at 122 Waverly Place, a mansion in the heart of the West Village. Come in, I'd love to show you around. As you enter 122 Waverly, you walk past what is one of the centerpieces of the home, this architectural scissor staircase that goes up five stories to the retractable roof. You can see light cascading down throughout the day, and you can feel the life on each level. Just past the parlor is this incredible chef's kitchen. It has two of everything, two ovens, two stoves, two refrigerators. It's really built for entertaining and also daily family life. So you have this waterfall chandelier, a mirrored backsplash, and oversized Korean kitchen island. And right in the back, you have this fantastic breakfast area. And just past these sliding glass doors, you walk straight out into this lush, deep garden. What you have is a great space to entertain. You have built-in dining, gas fire pit, and all of these mature trees that surround this garden make it so, so lush in here that you forget that you're actually in Manhattan. And up the grand staircase is a large formal living room adjacent to the dining room. The living room features a sleek, slate-framed gas fireplace. It's perfect for warm and cozy nights. These oversized historic windows bring in tons of natural light and bucolic views of Waverly Place. On this side, we have the formal dining room. It's an incredible space to throw a huge dinner party. You have a beautiful glass chandelier. You have the double height ceilings, which look out and give this fantastic bird's eye view of the garden and the kitchen below. But for ultimate relaxation, you gotta follow me upstairs. The penthouse level is a dedicated master suite. Cascading light floods into the entry hall from a tremendous glass skylight. Stepping in to the north facing, generously sized master bedroom, one can't help but feel a sense of calm and peace. You also have this pop up skylight. What's so amazing about the height is that you capture these sensational views of the Empire State Building. Facing south, you have the master bath, soaking tub, dual shower. Also on the south side of the master suite, we have the walk-in closet and dressing area. But that's not all. There's one last thing that I'd like to show you. And the retractable skylight opens to reveal the spectacular roof terrace. It has exceptional views of the Empire State Building and south all the way to the Freedom Tower. To have these open panoramic views from your very own rooftop is so incredibly rare to have from the heart of Greenwich Village. Thank you for joining me on this tour of 122 Waverly Place, a hidden gem in the heart of the West Village. When we come back, we shift things over to Brooklyn for a look at how one New York-based architect designed his dream family home. We'll be right back. You're watching Open House NYC. Now we're in Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn at the townhome of New York-based architect Hormuz Batlaboy. He embraced the original architecture of the building while ingeniously updating the interior. The result is a visually arresting yet comfortable home for his family. Enjoy.
Hi, I'm Harmaz Batliboy, Principal Architect of Batliboy Studio. Welcome to bed Brooklyn, and welcome to the home I created for my family. So this house is a typical Brooklyn brownstone. It's part of a landmark historic district. We bought this 100 plus year old abandoned townhouse and it needed a full gut renovation. By bringing my own modern and contemporary sensibility, I wanted to create a dialogue of point and counterpoint between old and new, contemporary and historic, interior and exterior. So let's go check it out. So these row houses were typically split one third, two thirds down the length. And when you account for the foyer and the entry area, the front becomes really narrow and allowed us to locate the living area at the rear and use the entire width of the house. So what's in the middle? The kitchen. It's literally and metaphorically the heart and center of this living space. And it's anchored by a 12 foot long kitchen island these new walnut cabinets echo the mahogany doors of the parlor floor coming into the main space. In order to keep the open plan kitchen as uncluttered as possible, appliances have their dedicated pull-out drawers. On either side of the stove, every possible spice is decanted into their own jars. But the best part? This massive set of white drawers that basically holds all our plates, cups, glasses, everything. And the great thing about that? The kids can reach it all because it's so low. I opted for a hand-blown glass tile, taking a cue from the original glass tiles that were revealed when we stripped the original fireplace mantles on either side of the kitchen. We picked this one because the abstract swirling of the molten glass was a beautiful counterpoint to the more traditional glass tiles that we had in the house. Facing south and drenched by sunlight, the exterior and interior are connected through this set of oversized folding doors that allow for a full connection between inside and outside. Materially, the grain of the garapa wood deck continues in the same direction as the white oak wood flooring in the living area, thus subtly directing you to go from inside to outside. Within the open plan parlor floor, the living area itself is defined by this huge Persian carpet. The pattern and texture of the carpet contrasting with the neutrality of the furnishings we have. When we bought this house, these original fireplace mantles were completely covered over with white paint. We lovingly stripped them down, cleaned them up, reset them, and realized that these were the original mahogany fireplace mantles. And now they've become the focal point of both the living and the dining areas. The original brick walls were stripped clean, and then a light whitewash creates a neutral background for our collection of art. Here in the master suite, full height openings between the bedroom and the closet create the illusion of more space and light in the central part of the floor plate where I located the bathrooms. The master bathroom is a serene escape in the house with the bronze floor tile complemented by the brushed bronze fixtures. The kids suite is a mirror image of the master suite but with some playful touches and ample storage for all of their toys, games, clothes, sports equipment. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing how we took this historic house and made it into a new contemporary modern home for our own family. Thank you for joining me. Come by and visit us in bed Brooklyn. Hormoz definitely married the classic and contemporary in a new and interesting way. And that idea of putting your glasses and your cups into wide drawers definitely keeps the kitchen clutter down, which I am a huge fan of. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are checking out how this designer also incorporated the historic details of her brownstone into her eclectic aesthetic. Welcome back. Now we're in the Prospect Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn for a look at how designer Louisa Roeder married the original details of her Brooklyn brownstone into her eclectic and contemporary aesthetic. Check it out. Hi, my name is Louisa Roeder. I'm a Brooklyn-based interior designer and welcome to my home. So this is a landmark Brooklyn brownstone built in 1870 and the reason that I love it is because it has all these original details that you don't find in new construction. I work in a lot of different styles with clients but my personal aesthetic leads towards cozy eclectic. I absolutely love lighting, layered rugs and artwork. 
In traditional brownstones, you enter on the parlor level, and the first room you see is the living room, so I wanted to pay special attention to decorating it. That's really easy though when you have a working fireplace. I wanted to have the room centered around it, but it was a tricky configuration since the room is long and narrow. So I made three distinct seating areas and I used one large rug to unify those three spaces. The advantage of this configuration is that it cozies up the space. There's a seating area in front of the fireplace and then a separate seating area by the windows. And I paid particular attention to the furnishings in here, including these two armchairs. So I found these two mid-century scoop chairs that I placed in the corner and I also reupholstered them from the original black leather. One of my personal favorite rugs is the one in front of the fireplace. The geometric motif is very unusual and it just so happened that it matched the motif in the mirror surround. Again, it's just part of my thought process to make sure that things tie in together. I usually don't like overhead lighting with the exception of pendants and chandeliers and I custom designed this light fixture with my friend and light designer, Paul Piacinelli, that he endearingly refers to as the Taj and he used repurposed materials from old Brooklyn brownstones. Right off the living room and through these original sliding doors is the kitchen. This is by far the most modern room in the house, but like the living room, the focus was on lighting. For that reason, I painted all of the wood moldings white. Again, for the light fixtures, I went to my friend Paul Pisanelli because I wanted them designed very specifically for this space. The light fixtures over the kitchen island, Paul found these repurposed X-ray lampshades. And for the light over the dining table, again, Paul made this fixture, which is very distinctive. And I love that the black ties in the accents around the windows and the countertops. I love to entertain, so I want to make sure the dining table was large enough to host parties. For the oversized kitchen island, again, I wanted to make sure that I kept things bright, so painted the wood white, and I even painted the brick backsplash white. In the master bedroom, I wanted it to feel very warm and relaxing. It has more upholstery than any other room in the house, and I feel like it really softens the mood. Though all the furnishings are upholstered, they're in different textures. But I kept all the colors neutral, because I find that to be the most relaxing. Since this is a larger room, I felt like I had space for a seating area, and again, the layered rug. I had the headboard built to take up the entire wall of this nook, so it felt like a very cocoon-like space. Because I love having mementos from my travels, I also have this tapestry from my friend from Mumbai. Thank you for joining me in my home today. I hope you enjoyed seeing my well-lit, cozy, and eclectic home. Coming up after the break, we head to West Soho with designer PJ Stephan. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back. Now we're in West Soho at a project with interiors by designer PJ Stephan. PJ used an Art Deco inspired aesthetic with a focus on geometric patterns and curved details, but kept things modern in its layout. Check this out. I'm PJ Steffen, Principal of Steffen Design Studio. Welcome to West Soho. I'm extremely excited to present one of our latest projects to you, one of the most exquisite properties in downtown New York. Let's check it out. I love to wow people as they enter a space. So we assembled a sophisticated pattern plate to make a grand impression on the way to the elevator. The custom fabricated steel and glass partitions, the bronze trimmed paneled walls, and the cut slab stone flooring were designed to be elegantly playful and to introduce the aesthetic of the rest of the home. Even though the elevator is a transitional space, I took the opportunity to make it a room using the same materials I use throughout the rest of the home. The parlor level is a multi-use space where the family can both relax and entertain. This floor is effortlessly divided into a sitting room, a media room, and a formal bar where guests can sit back with a stylish cocktail. What I like most about this space is the walnut bar. We incorporated channeled leather panels with an antique mirror back bar to create a chic boutique hotel feel. The double height window provides beautiful light and combines the parlor level with the third floor dining mezzanine and has the perfect place for a piano. Who wouldn't be impressed? 
On the third floor, our design story continues in the kitchen and dining spaces, where the same bronze trims, architectural steel, elegant stone surfaces, and Versailles parquet floors establish our 1920 chic backdrop. Here, antiques and artwork sourced from galleries in Paris are on display, namely this exquisite tiered crystal chandelier. I worked closely with the clients to provide a fashionable yet effective space for everyday living. Beautiful jacquard start carpeting and frette couture textiles provide fashion, where thoughtfully planned built-ins provide function. Automated custom drapery is programmed to open and close upon schedule, and a recessed Hollywood makeup mirror is seamlessly integrated into their daily routine. The custom master closet also has a channeled glass wall, and the floor-to-ceiling stone in the master bath gives it a spa-like feel. But if you want to go to an actual spa, you should check out the hammam in the basement. I really love giving a modern spin to Art Deco design, and this is one of my sexiest projects. I'm very happy you had a chance to take a look. If you're still curious about the price of this stylish, nearly 11,000 square foot Upper East Side townhouse, well, here it is. Were your estimates close? Let us know on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook at Open House TV. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?